Welcome to the PRSS 104 Provider Management Advanced Training Session. The purpose of this training is to support enrollment and management clerks using the Provider Management PM area of PRSS. During this session, we'll show you how to use the Advanced Search option in the Provider Management area of PRSS to quickly view only the provider details you need. Then we'll show you how to make updates to provider data, such as specialties and demographics. So the agenda for today is after the welcome and opening, we'll cover provider management basics review, edit provider information. Then we'll look at provider management and the update process flow. And we'll go over some more searches and then close. So learning objectives for this video, for the Provider Management Advanced session. We're gonna update provider information via provider management, understand the provider management update process. We're gonna identify rates and use advanced provider management searches. So for this portion of the class, we're gonna talk about editing provider information. In PRSS 103, Provider Management Basics, you learned how to access PM, search for a provider, and use the filter navigation feature. Now it's time to learn about the advanced provider information available in Provider Management, or PM. Before we get started, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. As updates are being made, we want to point out two things to keep in mind. Any changes made in PM during a provider's revalidation period 90 days prior to the revalidation due date, will not be updated on the provider's revalidation application. The provider may submit the changes, including reports to Change Managed Care Organization, or MCO programs, as part of the revalidation process. Also, if a record requires an end date to be input into the system, but the information does not require renewal, then the proper entry for that required date field would be 1231, the year 9999. That'll keep the system from end dating that information. Okay, let's look at accessing PRSS. Remember to access PM. You will always start at the MES login page. The training environment isn't connected to MES, but we'll quickly review what it will look like when you go in to do this. On the MES login page, enter your MES credentials, your username, password, sign in. Then scroll to the bottom of the MES landing page and use the arrow, the arrow head showing off here to the right of provider management. If you have access to K2, you'll see the link for that system. Otherwise, you'll just see the PRSS link. This is the link you would use to access the screening process details. Now we're gonna to switch to the training environment. And search for a provider. We're just gonna use the quick search for this one and grab an NPI while that's loading. Insert the NPI here under the Provider Quick Search NPI field. We'll leave this as active for the provider show provider location IDs that are active. And we'll click the search. The search results, this is a single provider, so we're only seeing one provider location ID. The link for that Provider Location ID will take us to the Provider Management Information section. And as you recall from 103, this information up above here is read-only, but does give you an idea. To make sure that you're in the proper record, you should review this. The Base Information section, of course, is expandable as we talked about in PRSS 103. Now, we are going to use the filter nav to go to specialties and taxonomies because we're going to go add a specialty and remove a specialty or delete a specialty. 
So for this demonstration, we're going to click on specialties and taxonomies. We could hit the main section header. It would select all these, but that just means more information we have to sift through or scroll through. So we only want specialties and taxonomies for this particular item. Remember, we have to come back and collapse the filter nav so it can build the page and add the information to that. And here we get under the comments, remember that's the bottom of the provider information page. So we have specialties and taxonomies now added with the filter nav feature. Now in order to add a taxonomy, we have a create new button here. If we were editing only, we could hit the edit button here, but we, we could also show inactives and we'll show you what that is when we end up deleting this one. So we're going to go ahead and create new to add a specialty. Notice this first checkbox is primary. The record behind here already shows we have a primary specialty. We are going to leave it as that. We are not going to select primary for this new specialty that we're adding. But we're going to add a specialty here. of speech and language therapy. And taxonomy of audiology assistant or speech and language assistant. Sorry, we're going to use that assistant. We got to come down here and put input an effective date. We could type in the date or we can use the calendar. I want to go for about a month before end date. There's no requirement. A specialty should last until whenever for the provider. So we'll leave that end date 12-31-9999. As you see the blue asterisk here, this date is required, but we don't want the system to end date it. So we put in this particular end date. And then we click save. When we click save, it's going to process. And if it's successful, it's going to throw up this green bar up here. It says specialty was, if this came up as red, it would have an error in what uh, the system needs to be fixed for to save. So when you get the green bar, you know it's done. You can come back down here and you look, it is there. Now let's reverse what we just did. Let's delete this specialty. In order to do that, we come over to the edit button here for this row. Click on edit. And the edit specialty window opens. If I come down to, I look at the information here. If I come down to the bottom on the left, I can see inactivate. That's actually how you delete a specialty or taxonomy. I just make it inactive. So I'm going to click on the inactive button. It'll process and you'll see the green success banner here with the green check box and you see below that that specialty and taxonomy have disappeared from the screen. If I come back up and say show inactives, it will show that there are several inactives. So when we make them inactive, they disappear from the normal view or the default view, but you can display them by clicking show inactives, the checkbox there. I want to demonstrate one other edit. If we want to change an address, remember we need to go to the filter nav to expand, to select what we want to. I can uncheck the specialties because I don't need it to show again, but I'm going to come over to under demographics and general information. I'm going to come to name and addresses, check that box. 
and then I'm going to close or collapse the filter nav, which will build a new view with addresses available. You see it spinning here, building the page, and usually it doesn't take this long, so something's going on in the background, but here we are. Okay. Now, if I come down to these addresses, I see there's a service location address, a mail to address, and a pay to address. We want to change, we want to make a slight change to the mail to address here. So we come out to the edit column, click on the edit icon. You could copy here to the right here. You see that icon and paste it somewhere if you needed it. But here we want to edit. We want to change the actual address. I click on the edit icon, the window pops up. And notice I have the mail to type. I want to just check that real quick. And the, the actual address change is just a number. They just moved down the street. So I'll change that and I'll come down and click save bottom right. There are phone numbers that are also exposed here. And I'm going to click save. I get the success banner here. I see the mail to address has changed. Now just a word of caution here, or just a heads up, if you edit the address and you've changed it completely, this address will be compared to the United States Postal Service database. And it may ask you to select the new database because a lot of times you don't use the plus four zip and it does. It'll input that for you. And you can select to keep the U.S. Postal Service database record as the address. So just keep in mind that will be checked. And so we've changed that address on this provider record. And just keep in mind if there is an error when you're checking this or saving this, it will report there. Now that we've edited some information, let's look at the audit feature available in PM. So you can see how the system keeps track of and reports changes that are made. If I go up to the top here, I see this audit button. I click on audit, left mouse click, and I have to put in the audit criteria. And I just want to go from yesterday to today and see the changes. Now you could use enter a user ID and see changes that that user had made. And I'm going to go ahead and just leave the dates. Over the last day, what changes have made, I'm going to click search. And it'll search for any searches, I mean any, pardon me, any edits that have been made. We see an address was updated, date, time, user ID, and source of change. Same here, specialty deleted, specialty added. So if we come down to this specialty added and I expand this, I would see the transaction data is specialty. I click to expand specialty and I can see the before after before there were no values here and we can scroll down a little bit after all these were added. You can see after value is there. Oops, I'm going to go back up here I can collapse that back. I can come up and look at the address updated. The address before and after what was changed. For the audit history. If I go back and look at that same audit, you can see the source of change is provider management. If it came from the provider portal, it would be there or MCO portal and the user ID that made the changes and what was accomplished in the system. 
at the top here you see these little funnels. We could also filter by a certain date equal to after or equal to or is before or equal to to limit our search down search results down for the audit if necessary. All right, let's close the audit feature. I'll also keep in mind the help function is also here for audits. If I click on that, I would see the help and it would talk about information there. I'm going to go ahead and close the audit window. Now that we've seen the audit criteria, we're going to go back to the slides now. And I'm going to just go back to home here and go back to slides. As we want to introduce the next section of information we're going to cover. Here, we're going to talk about the PM update process flow. We'll talk about updates from PRSS users, updates from providers and MCOs, and revalidation impacts to the system. The provider screening module compares updates for sensitive identifying and credentialing information for Virginia Medicaid providers against a variety of federal and state databases. But some of these updates require additional review and approval before changes are displayed in PM and the provider portal. PM Workflow K2 manages the review and decisions for some of the changes requested of a provider's information. When a request is submitted that triggers the creation of a workflow record, the review and decision tasks of the request are broken into work items. These work items make up a maintenance case. Though some maintenance cases may only have one work item to approve or deny the request, other updates require multiple review steps or multiple users to make a final decision which each have separate work items. These can be changes requested from clerks using provider management, from providers or delegates using provider portal, or from automated revalidation schedules within PM. Let's look at the process for each of these workflows in a little more detail. Most updates entered in PM are immediately saved and then display in provider portal. However, some changes, such as updates to ownership that require screening, are sent through the PM workflow process for additional review before they can be finalized. These items indicate a pending status in the respective PM sections. As you can see on the screen there, you see a pending under the screening for this Managing Employee Associations section. When a provider or delegates adds deletes, or updates provider information into the provider portal, the system runs a process to determine whether the change should be automatically approved, if it needs to be reviewed, and if screening is required. Updates submitted by providers or their delegates from provider portal are processed through PM workflow. When a request from the provider portal is pending in PM workflow, a message displays in PM. Approved change requests display in the respective sections. So as you see on the screen here, a change initiated from external portal, which may affect this data, is currently in process. So the warning's there that this is being changed and to wait for the update. The revalidation workflow ensures the providers who have not revalidated their details over a period of five years are terminated. The revalidation process begins when the provider has 90 days remaining before the revalidation due date and receives reminder notifications. If the provider has not submitted the revalidation details by the final reminder notification, the work item for revalidation is generated. Banner notification messages appear at the top of the provider information page when a provider's revalidation, DEA number, and or licenses are set to expire. So that's the example you see on the screen. 
provide a revalidation and process. Remember this is a, this click here is a link so you can get more information. So you see that right at the top of the provider information page when you would search, find that provider location. Okay, let's review what we've been over in this section. Question one, updates made in provider management are also updated on the provider's revalidation application while a provider is in revalidation. True or false? Answer is false. While they're in that revalidation application, nothing is updated. Next question. Pending changes requested from provider management display as pending in provider portal. True or false? The answer is false. Changes do not appear in provider portal until approved. Next question. Pending changes requested from provider portal display as pending in provider management. True or false? And this one is true. Now in this next section, we're going to talk about viewing rates in the system. There are two ways to do that and we'll cover those. Provider rates are maintained under plan management, a separate application that functions within the PM module. Provider rates can be viewed in plan management without accessing PM. Let's log into the training environment and show you how to view provider rates. So I'm going to go to the training environment here. There are two ways to access fee schedules from the rate settings search and from within the provider's information page. We'll show you the rate settings search first. So if I come to the menu and go to plan management, you see there's a rate setting. That's the rate setting search. We're going to click rate setting. Go to the rate setting search page. Search criteria, select search by. There's only one possibility, fee schedule, that exists at this particular time. Also want to mention that Virginia Medicaid Program's reimbursement team uses four different fee schedules. That's cost settled, hospital, nursing facility, or other. So on this one, I'm going to go to the release status over here. I'm going to select the value of pending just because I know in the training system, there are multiple pending schedules. This is not hooked up to the live fee schedules. So these are training or made up fee schedules. So keep that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and click search here and view the results. And as we said just a few moments ago, here's your other fee schedule ID, nursing facility, hospital, cost settlement. We're going to use cost settlement here. And that populates the table with the rate information. If you see at the top here, you have the location, NPI, rate type, code, if there's a factor, rate amount, effective, end date, and whether it's valid or not. Notice that this top results page, I can also use the filters. So an NPI equal to, or contains, or ends with, or starts with. There, we can go to effective date or end date. We can see what those are equal to after an e or before an end date that we want to enter. And below, what you'll notice is this portion here below where it says fee schedule information it gives a little bit more detail in whichever row we select up here. So down here we see the rate amount 346, that's 08, that's the one that's showing. If I come down to this 720 line, you'll see this updated down here. 
with the rate and the other information for that particular rate information. We can also scroll through next or backup one, two, down and up to the selected fee schedule buttons here. And as we've explained before, these search results, you can see down here, we have more pages than that to look through the information. So once you get to a fee schedule, you can see the different rates there as you scroll through them. Now, the second way to find a fee schedule is we have to go to the provider record. So we found this fee. We went to plan management. We hit the rate setting and did a fee schedule search using the pending status. Remember fee schedule. And then we just use pending as the value to find those. In this particular instance, or other searches you can make, you can use fee schedule IDs, names, provider taxonomies, provider types. If you're looking for a specific provider or provider location, you can look by code types, change request IDs, level of care or modifiers, or any combination of those provider type, provider specialties that you can look through. So that's the one way we do it. We go to plan management rate setting search. Now we're going to go to the provider themselves and I'm going to do a quick search here for a particular type of provider. Let's see provider. Specialty, provider type, sorry. I'm going to just do a search for physicians here real quick. That have a release status of pending. I didn't find any. I'm just going to do a pending search here. Go back to this cost settlement. I'm just looking for an NPI here. I'm just going to select this NPI, copy it. So I can come up here to the menu and show you the second way to do it. If we come down to the quick search, since we have an NPI, we can go to provider management. We're going to find the Quick search page. We can insert the NPI, do a search for that provider. And since they only have one provider location ID, select that. Then in order to see the fee schedules, we'll come down to the filter nav, expand it, come down to rates, fee schedule and select fee schedule here. It'll collapse the filter nav, build the page. So then we can see the fee schedule, the cost settlement. Notice that put in the location ID automatically, did the search. Now we come up with the cost settlement, fee schedule ID, and we can look at the different rates contained within that fee schedule as we did before. Notice this green filter is on for that provider location ID. And the rest works the same as we've discussed before. Now we're going to switch back to the slides. We're going to go back to the home page. And before we switch back to the slides, let me just review how we did that last one. We want to look for rates for a particular provider. We come to and go to the quick search under provider management. We learned that in PRSS 103. I can input that NPI. 
search for that provider, open their provider record using that provider location ID link. Then I come down to filter nav, expand out, select fee schedule. It'll collapse automatically and build the fee schedule that we have. Display page. And then you can click on the actual fee schedule ID and view the rate lines. Okay, let's go back to home. I'm going to go back to the slides. And we're going to perform some other searches. Demo those so you can see what else is available in provider management. So aside from provider and rate setting searches, there are other helpful searches available in provider management. Let's go back to the training environment and talk about them now. We'll even show what a few of these look like in detail, or we'll talk through them. So let's go back to the PRSS training environment. We're going to go to menu. We're going to go down to provider management, and we'll come over to the flyout menu here. We have providers, we have owners and managing employees, and We've done those searches both in PRSS 103. So just to demonstrate the IRS W9 tax ID searches and what's available there, we can put in a tax ID and you'd be able to get that and then edit that information as needed or just view the information from this particular search and screen. If we want to do the, already did the owner manager, we've done the W9. The next search down is CLIA numbers. Uh, I'm not going to demonstrate that one. We're just going to talk about this one. CLIA number search displays information on service covered by the CLIA number. Uh, information associated with the CLIA number are loaded from files obtained from the CMS OSCAR database and is available for inquiry here. It's not connected to the training system, so I'm not going to do that. Then coming down to workflow items, these include activities that require additional screening or review before being accepted or denied. Provider management work items are events initiated by a PRSS enrollment and management clerk and uh, workflow activities with EP in the title are initi initiated by providers from external provider portals. Then the MCO enrollment list, if we come down here, MCO enrollment list, click on here, we'll do a demo a search here. If I search by an MCO name, you could do provider location ID or MCO ID. I'm going to do a provider MCO name. Magellan is what I'm going to enter here. I'm going to MCO status. I'm going to do pending as well, just because I know that's going to show up in the training environment, but you can pick an appropriate status. We have provider type and specialty code. We could also enter here, but I'm going to click search. And I get a complete care uh, Virginia MCO ID provider location ID. The provider location ID, of course, would take me to the provider location, the provider's information page. Then if I use the filter nav, I come out to the MCO enrollment and collapse the provider nav. I'll see what MCO contracts are in what status. And we see these are all new MCO and they're all in pending status because we put that status there. So that's how you would see those. You could 
filter by sort by the top here because these are search results in tables. And let's go back to the next item. If we come down to provider management, we have the MCO enrollment list, which we just did. And then we have NPPR transactions. These are not connected and neither are the PRN transactions to the training environment. So I'm going to talk about those next. So the non-participating provider registration transactions, the NPPR file exchange allows for the registration of a non-participating provider with an MCO directly through the back end of the Medicaid Management Information System, or MMIS. This method of registering a provider is only for those providers who have limited contact with Medicaid beneficiaries, who are not participating in any MCO network, and who choose not to become enrolled in Medicaid. All providers who participate in an MCO's network or in the fee-for-service program must use the normal PE processes. This process is primarily used to register an out-of-state emergency provider. NPPR files are processed once daily. A NPPR transaction may be submitted when a claim is received by an MCO containing the NPI of a non-participating provider and the provider is not found in the MMIS full PRN file. The NPPR and NPPR response files contain all the information for a given provider service location contained within a single transaction record. So that's the non-participating provider registration transactions. Now the provider network transactions. The PRN file exchange allows for the electronic communication of new or changed information related to a provider enrolled in the PRSS. This exchange is between the MMIS and external entities such as MCOs. The source of the data updates can originate in either the PRSS or within the external systems. The common file exchange structure allows for the timely sharing of that data with each of the affected systems. The PRN files from PRSS to the MCOs are designed to share current information on a given provider. All providers serving Virginia Medicaid members must enroll within the MMIS prior to being included in any fee-for-service Medicaid claim or participating in counter records. If affected data related to a provider serving a Medicaid member is updated within an MCO system, the MCO will need to create and share a PRN provider update record with PRSS to share that change in data. The PRN process does not support the enrollment of a provider into the MMIS. The standard MMIS PE process is required. The PRN files are used to communicate changes in provider data between the MMIS and the MCOs, as well as the method to share that change in data. The PRN process does not support the enrollment of a provider into the MMIS. The standard MMIS PE process is required. The PRN files are used to communicate changes in provider data between the MMIS and the MCOs, as well as the method to share which Medicaid providers are participating and non-participating in the MCOs network. External portal workflow transactions are the next EP or external portal workflow transactions. Track changes submitted by a provider or delegate via the provider portal, such as license update. And the base ID termination transactions are not loaded in the training environment. This is where you can view base ID terminations and reasons. So let's switch back to the slides. Now let's review the course summary for Provider Management Advanced. We've updated provider information via Provider Management. We understand the Provider Management Update process. We've identified the rates, the fee schedules, the two ways and we use advanced provider management searches. 
Thank you for attending the PRSS 104 Provider Management Advanced video. If you have any questions pertaining to your MES access or additional information presented in this video, please contact your manager or supervisor. Thank you for your attention today.